This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Valheim video. Today we're going to give you a quick start guide to the Mistlands. Let's get to it. So you've beat Yagi Boy and you are ready to head over to the Mistlands, but you have no idea where to get started and what you need to do. In order to get started with Mistlands stuff and especially to craft pretty much anything Mistlands related, especially all of the magic stuff, you are going to need Refined Iter. In order to get that, you're going to need to find one of these roots here. You can see this one is currently all dried up, but this is what they look like. And then you are going to need to slap down one of these sap extractors on them. Now these roots are all over the place. And as you can see here, they're relatively easy to find. And you're gonna need a bunch of them because as you just noticed, they do dry up after you've extracted some sap from them. So you can see this one here says the ancient root is pulsing with energy. And then over here, we have another one. So these are just another type of resource node added to the game. But as you can see here, in order to make these sap extractors, you are going to need one very important item, and that is the diverger extractor. You are also going to need the, yeah, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, the world tree wood, and that's really easy to get because there are little saplings of it all over the place, basically all of the trees over here. As you can see here, this is one, this is one. You just harvest the trees in the mistlands and you will get that wood. The key item that you're going to need is that extractor, which you can see right here. And there is a very specific place to get that because you cannot make them. You can find the extractors in these little diverger outposts. And forgive me if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I have no idea how to pronounce half of this crap. So I'm just going to wing it and we're going to call them divergers. You can find those extractors in the diverger encampments. Here is what one of them looks like. I'll show you some other examples, but here is a relatively larger one. This is a mining type one. And this is what you're looking for, the diverger component crate. When you break that, as you see there, you will get one of the diverger extractors. As stated, these little outposts have a lot of different looks in here is what one of the other ones looks like, this little outpost style here. You will also find the extractors or can find the extractors. If we run up top here, this one should have one up at the top. There it is right there. That's what you're looking for. And these outposts have a few other different types of looks to them, and they are just littered throughout the Mistlands biome. You have to run around and find them. And of course, if you break anything here, you are going to make these guys very angry and they are going to attack you. Once you have your extractor, you have your wood, you have your five black metal, all you need to do is slap down a workbench and find one of these roots anywhere in the Mistlands and you place down your extractor on it like so. As you can see here, it's telling you that it is extracting the sap and it's extracting at normal speed. After a little bit of time, this will fill up and it will have a sap in it and you can just walk up to it and hit E to extract the sap the same way you do beehives. Note that even when the root is all dried up, you can still extract sap from it. However, it's going to be at a much slower rate. As you see here, it says that it's extracting, but extracting slowly. So you're not going to get sap nearly as fast. So if you make your base around one of these and you have a bunch of extractors on it, that should still work. It should still provide you sap after some time. Just note that it's not going to be as fast as if you find a fresh one. And after a few seconds, you can see that our fresh one here is already ready to go and we can just collect it and you get the sap, which you see here. Now that you have the sap, now what do you do with it? Well, you are going to need to refine it. And in order to refine it, you have to make one of these refineries. If you take a look, it is right here. And to craft it, you are going to need black marble, black metal, the wood from the world tree, as well as five black cores and three sap. The marble is relatively easy to get. There are these bones, not just in these encampments, but littered throughout the mistlands. I'm just here because this is the easiest one to get to, to show you. But if you mine it with a black metal pickaxe, it will eventually break and it will give you the black marble. There you go. I've broken it and you can see I have the black marble. Here is another example of bones that will give you black marble. This one is a skull accompanied by a rib cage. This one is protected by some seekers and some ticks. So you'll have to fight those before you can peacefully mine it. But this is what you will be looking for out in the wild. In order to get the black cores, you are going to need to look for these new dungeons in the Mistland. All of them that I found so far look relatively similar. They have these giant protrusions coming out.
out from them, kind of shaped like, I don't know, a grasping claw or whatever. And then in the center of that is some stairs that leads up to the door. This is usually protected by a bunch of the new bug monsters, so you'll have to fight your way into it. Once you get into it, it's a crazy maze of just, it's, it's a maze. It's what you're used to with the dungeons, the procedural generated dungeons in Valheim, and it's just a network of tunnels, but inside of it, you can find secret doors, which will lead you to black cores, and you can also just find black cores in and around the structure as well. They'll just be placed out and about, as you see on the screen. Do note that it is possible to generate some of these without having the black cores in them. The first one that I ran into did not have any black cores in it, nor did it have any secret doors hiding any black cores. It was completely devoid of them. So it's kind of a pain in the butt at times because you'll be looking around and it takes a while to try to find these. They're a little bit more rare than the Diverger outposts and you can possibly spend all of that time looking for them, find one and it not have any black cores in it. Also, you need five of them just to create the extractor, so it may not even have five of them in it. You may have to do multiple runs of these dungeons, similar to when you are hunting for the Sertling cores. After you've gotten all of your resources, then you can finally place down your Eiter refinery. Once you have done so, you walk up to it and sap goes in the front here. You just look at it, hit E to add sap. To add the fuel that powers the thing, you are going to need to come up to the top, and this is where you add the fuel. Notice it doesn't tell you what kind of fuel it takes, and it takes a fuel that you probably won't expect it to take, and it's kind of strange that it takes what it takes, and we're going to talk about that now. There is another resource that you get from the Diverger outposts, and that is a fuel that powers it, and that comes from breaking these crates here. You can see I broke them and I got a bunch of soft tissue. There we go. I got a couple of more. Well, I had a bunch on me, but we got a decent amount from that, probably like eight to 10. Once you have your soft tissue, you walk up to the top and you place it in like so, and it is a one for one. So one sap, one soft tissue will get you one of the refined iter, and you are going to need that for almost every single Mistlands item. If we come over here to the Black Forge and we take a look, you can see the Carapace Helmet takes it, the new bow uses it, almost all of the different weapons use it, that one uses it, that one uses it, and you need a decent amount of it as well. So this is a very valuable substance and it's going to take you a while to grind for all of it. Now your magic items are created in this structure here, the Galdor table, whatever it's called, and if you take a look this is where you craft all of your magic stuff so this is where you craft the magic outfit which increases your eider regeneration as well as the different staves and the dead razor and you can see every one of them takes anywhere from 10 to 15, some things taking 20. Once the refined ITER is done processing, you can see that it pops out right here, out that little spout there, and all you have to do is walk up to it and you will collect it. Now that you know how to get all of the necessary resources to craft Mistlands stuff, let's quickly talk about traversing the Mistlands. Traversing the Mistlands can be a little bit difficult. If you don't have anything to push the mist back out of the way and you're just running around in it all willy-nilly, as you can see, it's very, very difficult to see. So one of the first things you want to craft right here is the Wisp Light. Once you equip that, and you just right click on it the same way you equip all of the other stuff, you can see that the little wisp floats around and pushes back the mist so that you can easily see the things around you. It takes it a second sometimes, so if you're running through really fast, it is possible to run into some surprises. So the mist lands is kind of an area where you don't really want to sprint too fast. You want to give the mist light time to push things out of the way so that you can see what you're running into. In order to get the wisps to craft these things, it's pretty easy to do. You're just going to make the wisp fountain you will get the torn spirit which is the item you need to craft it from Yagathul, the goblin boss once you defeat him it is the new item that he drops then you just craft this thing and you place it down somewhere then you need to wait until nighttime you can see here it says the wisps demand darkness once it's nighttime you can see that it now says the wisps are coming so if i just get rid of this so that you can actually see them start to sprout and we give it a second wisps will start to hover around this 
And here we go, we have our first wisp that just showed up and all you have to do is look at the wisp and hit E and then it drops out of the sky and then you can pick it up and then that allows you to craft not only the wisp light, but it also allows you to craft these wisp torches, which are permanent fixtures to push back the mist as well as the mist walker. The mist walker will also push back the mist when you have it equipped. You can either have it out or you can have it on your back either way. Let's swap the time back here so you can see better. Even if it is on your back and you walk into the mist, it will still push it back as you can see here. Give it a second and it's pushing the mist out of the way for us. So those are a few of the different ways that you can push the mist back out of the way to allow you to see a little bit easier in the mist lands. However, there is one other item I suggest crafting before you craft anything else that is going to make things a little bit easier for you to travel in the Mistlands, and that is the Feather Cape. You can see that is crafted over here at the Galder table or whatever it's called. It's a relatively simple recipe. You're gonna need 10 feathers, five of the scale hide. You get this from the rabbits that you'll see all over here in the Mistlands. They are relatively thick in the Mistlands. And then you are going to need 20 refined iter. The Mistlands is a a very vertical biome. It has a lot of really tall mountainous structures as you can see here all over the place, it is very, very tall. And this is going to make things a lot easier for you when it comes to traversal because you will be wanting to get up to these tall areas because a lot of them have the diverger outposts in the center. As you see right here, you can see it's sunk down in the middle of a mountainy area. So after you take the time to climb up said mountain area, it's going to help prevent fall damage when it comes to getting down inside of it. And it's going to allow you to do things like jump from the top and glide down on top of the structures, which can allow you to do things like shoot the diverger from the top. And it's just going to make overall traversal a lot easier for you. As you can see, I can easily jump up the side of mountaintops here and just glide across the different areas, jump and glide off and glide down. And I don't have to worry, speaking of rabbits, there's one right there. So yeah, after you make your wisp light, which is super easy to make, it's one silver and one wisp, super cheap to make. You don't need any Mistlands content in order to make it. I highly advise making the feather cape. And then if you want it, if you don't want to have the wisp light in your inventory to take up inventory space, I would make the mist walker sword because that is not only going to push the mist out of the way, it's also going to to act as a weapon because it is a weapon. All right, and I think that just about covers everything you're gonna need to allow you to quickly jump into the Mistlands. I'll be doing more detailed guides on very specific things here in the future, but I just wanted to get this quick start guide out to show you where the necessary materials were for everything to get you started. Hopefully you found this video helpful and informational. If you did, consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. And if you're interested in more Valheim content, you can check out the link on the screen right now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.